Hi there and uh, welcome to our encouragement from the Psalms. Today we're looking at uh, Psalm 48 and I'm going to read it for you now. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain, beautiful in elevation, is the joy of all the earth. Mount Zion in the far north, the city of the great king. Within her citadels, God has made himself known as a fortress. For behold, the kings assembled, they came on together. As soon as they saw it, they were astounded. They were in panic, they took to flight. Trembling took hold of them, their anguish as of a woman in labour. By the east wind you shattered the ships of Tarsus. Tarsus. As we have heard, so we have seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, which God will establish forever. We have thought on your steadfast love, O Lord God, in the midst of your temple. As your name, O God, so your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with righteousness. Let Mount Zion be glad. Let the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. Walk about Zion, go around her, number her towers, consider well her ramparts, go through her citadels, that you may tell the next generation that this is God, one God forever and ever. He will guide us forever. Now then, this is uh, a third, the third Psalm um, written by King Hezekiah. Remember Hezekiah, a bit of a poet. And he uh, he's writing here about the holy city, the holy city of Mount Zion uh, slash Jerusalem, Jerusalem with Mount, Mount Zion. And uh, it's divided nicely into four parts and it challenges us therefore on four different four different levels. Don't forget the the um, the the people of uh, the people of God are celebrating, are giving thanks for their deliverance from the Syrians for the protection of Jerusalem, and so they 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 come together in this psalm as they have done in Psalm forty six and Psalm forty seven to get to rejoice and to celebrate and to give praise, and in particular in this psalm they give this four distinct thanks four distinct thanks and each one of them challenges us so the first one is about god and their city verses one to three where they acknowledge that the this the city is a is a is a well protected city is a is, is a powerful city is a city where they are safe but first and foremost they recognize that god is their protection not a fortress city i think that's important for us in everyday life as we uh, look for protection as we seek uh, that sort of security that could be found within the walls of a city we need to remember that our protection comes from god that our holy city is is above with the lord and our earthly city is here with the Lord living within us. We are temples of God, the Holy Spirit living within us. But most importantly, we are to remember that our strength and protection comes from God, not from the four walls of a city in this context. And neither should we seek our protection and security from the things of this world. Um, I suppose, such as, as money and position uh, and so on and so forth. We've, we've, we've gone over them many, many times. Then from verses four to seven, they talk about God and their enemies. And they're giving thanks to God for, the, for thwarting their enemies, for putting their enemies down. And as we read this, we are reminded of uh, we were reminded of when God sent his angels, an angel, to the Assyrian camp and wiped out 185,000 men. So whilst, whilst they have understood that God 
is their security, not the city per se. They now see God in the way in which he protects them from their enemies. The security is total, it encompasses all things. And as we read, as we read verses four to seven, we should be reminded and thinking about the angel that God sent to destroy 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. Then we move on to God and their worship in verses eight to 11. And having recognized where their real security lies, having recognized and given thanks for the way in which they have been delivered from their enemies, the proper response for God's people then is to worship, is to worship. And I, I suppose and, and believe that in, in all circumstances, we are to give thanks and to worship God. As incredibly difficult as that, okay, that can be, we are supposed to worship God in all circumstances. The proper response for God's people, for people who declare themselves believers in, in, in our Saviour Jesus Christ, is to worship him and give thanks. Not, not just in the good times, but also in the bad times. And that, for many, is one of the most difficult aspects of Christian life in, in, the, in a 21st century world. In many regards, it has always been a very difficult thing to do, to worship in all circumstances. But that, that is what we are called to do. And here, God's people uh, mirror that for us and model that for us in the way in which they are behaving. They understand that God is their fortress, not the city. They understand that God delivered them from their enemies, not anything that they did of themselves. And they understand that their, their proper response to that is to worship him and give thanks and to praise his name, to praise his name. And we see that in verses 8 to 11. As we have heard, so we have seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, which God will establish forever. We have thought on your steadfast love, O God. They've given it real consideration in the midst of your temple. As your name, O God, so your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with righteousness. Let might Zion be glad that the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. The proper response to God in all circumstances is to worship him. And then finally, finally, the fourth thing that they do is about God and their future in verses 12 to 14. In verses 12 to 14, they display their trust. Walk about Zion, go around her, number her towers, consider well her ramparts, go through her citadels, that you may tell the next generation that this is God, our God, forever and ever. He will guide us forever. And there we have this absolute rock solid trust in God. And so we can see a psalm that develops uh, a way for us to perhaps model our lives. To first recognize that God is our protector, not anything that the world that we can build around us or that the world gives us, not anything that we consider important in this world, not anything that where we may find temporary security in this world, our real protector and security is our Lord Jesus Christ, is our God, is our Heavenly Father above. Two, that God deals with our enemies. He does it in his own time and in his own way. We are to be, remain faithful. And at this time, I suppose our number one enemy, one could see it, is the, the virus. It is an enemy out there lurking invisibly. God will deal with it in his own time and in his own way. And it is not for us to second guess God or be impatient with God or to try and explain everything for that would make us God, wouldn't it? To, to know everything that he knows. So we are to acknowledge that he will deal with our enemies 
in his own time and in his own way, in a similar way into which he sent the angel to, to destroy the Assyrians. He deals with it in powerful, unexpected, unimaginable way. Thirdly, the proper response in all circumstances is to worship God. And then fourthly, we are to trust God with today and with our future. We are to trust God. We are to say with absolute authority and confidence and in faith, as it says here in verse 14 of this wonderful psalm, that this is God, our God, forever and ever. He will guide us forever. Be blessed this day. Read this psalm. See the wonder of our God. Praise his mighty name. Give thanks and trust him. Not just today, but in the days to come. Amen.